Hello and good morning, good afternoon, year nines. Uh, today's lesson we're looking at photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Now, hopefully, you've kind of done some pre reading with chapter 2.5 and chapter 2.6. Uh, that's what this content is from, so if you want to get a bit more information, um, obviously read from those chapters and uh, also download uh, these uh, slides too. So what is photosynthesis and what is cellular respiration? Well, they're basically two processes uh, that are opposite of each other. So what photosynthesis means, it means that you're creating organic chemicals or sugars, or in other words, uh, carbohydrates, using energy from sunlight. Uh, that's the chemical equation. Um, you need water and you need carbon dioxide, and you take those two things, add sunlight to it, and voila, you get some sugars and also oxygen. Cellular respiration is basically the process of burning or using these organic uh, chemicals or sugars and using that to create energy uh, for the cells to use. Um, so that's our chemical equation. The sugars or carbohydrates, uh, you need oxygen, combine those together. And then what it does is it's going to create energy. At the same time, it's going to release carbon dioxide and also water. So let's look into photosynthesis uh, in a more detailed manner. Now, the process of photosynthesis is mostly used by plants, some algae, and also some bacteria called cyanobacteria. In plants, uh, which is what we'll focus on, um, it occurs in the leaves, uh, inside the cells, at a special structure called chloroplasts. Right? So there's like a cross-section diagram of our leaves, and if you look at the, the cells over here, I'm just going to highlight one right here. And all those little green dots inside of that, those are the chloroplasts. And that's where photosynthesis would occur. Now, um, so inside those chloroplasts, we also have these chemicals called chlorophyll. Right. Uh, where the water comes from is obviously from the roots. The plants is going to transport that from the roots in the ground. It's going to come up uh, through the through the stem. So there's your water. Water comes up through the stem up here and into the leaves. And obviously the leaves would capture the sunlight. The sunlight comes down. Uh, carbon dioxide from the air also gets absorbed into the leaves and all these three components come together in our chloroplasts. Okay. So in our chloroplasts, we have these things called chlorophyll. Those things or those chemicals capture the sunlight. So there are also little special structures um, in the chloroplasts. Uh, the first one that we'll look at is called thylakoids. Okay. Now thylakoids are these single stack uh, disc you see over here. Um, and if you stack them up like pancakes, we call this whole layer the granum. Okay, so these stack pancake layers, they call the granums, uh, the layers of thylakoids. Um, and the spaces in between it, we call those stroma. Now what's important uh, is, as I mentioned before, just these chemicals called chlorophyll. Now they actually are not inside the thylakoids, uh, that's the lumen, but on the membrane of the thylakoids. So it's actually the surrounding layer of the thylakoids that contain chlorophyll. 
and these are the chemicals that would trap or capture the sunlight to start the process uh, of photosynthesis. So you got carbon dioxide from the air absorbed into the leaf, you got the water that gets transported up through the stem into the leaf, and then the light, the sunlight, is captured by the in the thylakoid uh, membrane layer by these things called chlorophyll. Now there are actually two parts to the reaction of photosynthesis. Um, as I mentioned before, the first part is where the light is what we call the light reaction. What happens is your chlorophyll absorbs the light energy from the sun and taking all those carbon dioxide and water molecules, it's going to start a process and create these molecules called ATP. All right. These are chemical energy uh, and, and it's stored in these molecules called ATP. Then there's this next process uh, where at the stroma, so in between the thylakoids uh, or the granum layers, it's going to take those ATP and it's going to convert water and carbon dioxide and combine them together to make things called sugars or carbohydrates. Now this is called the dark reaction because it doesn't use the sunlight. We already use the sunlight for creating these ATP molecules. Now, in the, uh, in the dark reaction, we are taking the ATP molecule and using the energy there to combine water and carbon dioxide to make our sugar. So, these sugars produced by the plants are actually molecules we call glucose. Right? Uh, we can also convert them into other types uh, like sucrose, so there are many processes involved in that. But the important thing is now the plants need to move them to other parts of uh, its body. Uh, I would say the other leaves and other stems because obviously it needs the energy or the food, the sugars, uh, to survive. So we call that movement translocation, where they just translocate it through the uh, plant structure. Now, if you remember your cells uh, lesson last term, they, they can move them uh, via water transport to the leaves in the xylem and also through the phloem, uh, where you could also transport them in, the, in those tubes too. So the main question is, do all organisms need light energy to survive? Now, obviously, with plants, yes, but how about animals? Do they need light energy to survive? And I would say, yes, all organisms need light to, uh, energy to survive. Why? Well, because most plants use light energy, as we have seen, um, to make sugars or make their food. What then happens is the other organisms would eat the plants, uh, to provide the food for themselves, right? Because they don't have photosynthesis, they can't make um, the sugars, so they'll eat the thing that actually makes it, and in the process of eating the whole thing, they actually absorb uh, the sugar. Obviously, um, those that don't eat plants, that eat other animals, they they usually are, is because again they're going to eat the animal to absorb the sugars or the carbohydrates they have in their body. For themselves. So that kind of brings me back to the food web uh, that you've been working on uh, and that's the whole idea of the food web is that we're trying to get these energy from each other and where it starts from are the producers, the plants basically. They take energy from the sun, uh, water and air, the nutrients in the soil too, right, and they make their uh, they make their, it generally what we've got to, they're using photosynthesis, they make their sugars or the energy to survive. And then what will happen is you get other consumers, which are for example the rabbit and the grasshopper over here in this diagram, eating the grass and they are going to survive. And other consumers, like the snake would eat the grasshopper or the frog would eat the grasshopper or the mouse would eat the grasshopper, right? And furthermore, you get fill up the food chain, you got the hawk eating the snake, or the hawk eating the rabbit, 
So they're going to get those sugars through eating these organisms who have eaten the grass. Now next, I'd like to talk about cellular respiration. Now all living organisms, they get energy from the foods and sugars, all right, as I've uh, described before. Plants, obviously, they take uh, the sun's energy to make the food, so we call them producers. Um, the other organisms that eat the plants or eat each other, they're basically the consumers. So green plants would actually use the uh, food or the sugars made during photosynthesis to carry out what we call cellular respiration. So cellular respiration is what cells do to the sugar to get the energy. Right? It's a process that breaks down the sugar to get the energy. There are actually two types of cellular respiration. Um, we call them anaerobic cellular respiration or aerobic uh, cellular respiration. Now in aerobic respiration, this is the type that's the most efficient in breaking down the glucose or using up the sugars. Uh, because we break it down completely, okay. Uh, this is this is a store. Once we break them down, this is stored in what, in a molecule we call ATP, as you could see, or as you remember from the photosynthesis uh, reaction. So you can also store energy uh, in aerobic respiration in molecules called ATP, and the ATP uh, that we get, you get about 36 to 38 ATP molecules per reaction. So that's a lot of energy. Now where does this happen? This happens in a organelle inside the cell called the mitochondria. Now just to uh, remind you, in the next slide, I'm going to show you a picture of where the mitochondria is. So over here, you notice these structures with the squiggly lines in between. I'm kind of highlighting them out for you over here. So there's two here and there's one over here. These are the mitochondria. All right, so we have here is a diagram of the uh, animal cell. So in the middle, you got the nucleus, you got the ribosomes on the Golgi apparatus, uh, and then inside beside them you have these things called mitochondria so that's where all the sugars would go once the cell absorbs them and that's where it gets processed into ATP after they release the 36 or 38 ATP they actually go uh, they gets transported out of the cell to other cells to use or the cell might actually use them themselves to survive now in anaerobic respiration, um, it's similar to aerobic respiration, except uh, instead of creating ATP with oxygen, this is breaking down the glucose without the use of oxygen. Uh, this usually occurs in humans uh, when we do very strenuous ac exercise, right? Because our bodies, because we're suddenly using a lot of energy, our muscles are using a lot of energy. Um, it needs to suddenly create more ATP, but because we're not transporting enough oxygen to those muscles, it has to find that ATP energy from somewhere. So what it will do is it'll break down the glucose without oxygen, and uh, it'll create this thing called lactic acid. Right. Now this process occurs in the cytoplasm, that's outside of the mitochondria. Um, so, because obviously there's no oxygen, so it can occur anywhere, so in the cytoplasm is as good a place as any. So the glucose that's there would be broken down by a complicated uh, process, which you don't need to know in year 9. Uh, but it does create two ATP molecules uh, and lactic acid. Now you might know from your sporting uh, or you might even remember experiencing it when you start, you know, when your muscles start to ache and fatigue uh, when you're exercising a lot, that's because of this lactic acid buildup. 
um, it causes uh, those aches in your muscles. Right? So usually what we will recommend is you have to do some worn down exercises and these warm down exercises what they're doing is to kind of uh, break down the lactic acid so your mu muscles won't be that sore um, and just to kind of remind you where the cytoplasm is it's just the fluid uh, in between all these organelles as you can see on the right in this picture here now anaerobic respiration also occurs in organisms such as yeast um, it's not only just inside our body but it's also at, with yeast cells uh, and it's very important because yeast uh, when this happens is called fermentation and we use fermentation a lot um, to especially making breads uh, and especially making alcohol so it's basically what's happening is the sugar uh, gets into the yeast cell, so that's supposed to be a yeast cell in the cytoplasm. Fermentation will occur. The byproducts would be ethanol or alcohol and carbon dioxide. Right? And you get two ATP molecules of energy out of it. And that's anaerobic respiration in yeast. So uh, I'd like you to now, after this presentation, you can kind of go back to. Uh, your notes uh, it, that you've downloaded and look through it again and afterwards you can start the uh, photosynthesis and respiration worksheet.